Did you know that there is a gym for photographers? Todd Heido is a member, and that's why when he was out driving, the rain incessantly beating on his windscreen, instead of throwing up his hands and saying there is nothing to photograph, he used that rain to create these beautifully impressionistic landscapes. This is what happens when you send your photographer's eye to the gym. How's it, how's it? Awareness is probably the most important photographic skill that there is. And yet it's one that so few people actually work on. If you want to build, you know, bicep muscle, then you need to go to the gym, put in the repetitions on the dumbbells and build your muscle that way. The great photographers, those ones who can turn up in any scene and, and see instantly potential for awesome photographs, they have been working out their photographic muscles, that photographic eye that they've been training to be observant and to build awareness of, of what's around them. This is where those great photographs are hiding. So everything starts with observation. People these days, they look, but they don't see. Think about your own commute. How often have you got to work and you realize you haven't actually paid attention to anything along the way? This is that filter that we all build up to stop this kind of you know, visual overload. So we need to reset that filter to allow the great things in so we can actually start mining the, the everyday scenes around us for photographs. Now, fortunately, we can actually start doing this straight away. Look around you, see what you can see. In my own case, I'm in my office, I can see the light, I can see the camera, I can see a big softbox behind the camera, and I also can see a towel there on the desk next to my printer. And I'm asking myself, okay, how would that towel look photographed? Is there a possibility there? That looks kind of interesting. Do this yourself. You know, right now, what do you see? The window, keyboard, maybe you're in a cafe, maybe there's an interesting booth with somebody sitting in and the light looks really cool. Ask yourself, how would that scene look photographed? The familiar often sabotages our efforts to take you know, really cool photographs. Outside my office here, there is a corridor that runs the length of the house. Now, when we moved in, it's a corridor. Simply move some boxes down it. We walk up and down it every single day. Don't really give it a second thought. But after a conversation that I had with somebody about, you know, building up, you know, observation and, 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 and awareness, I started to look at that corridor differently. And I noticed something during different times of the day. The light looks very different in there, whether the doors are open or closed. There were shadows being cast in there. There were reflections. And I thought to myself, how would that look as a photograph? I love light and I love shadows. Why, are they, why am I not photographing the very thing that's outside in my hallway? So I did. And I was surprised because there's just some... I think really lovely photographs that I'd been walking past many times a day for like two years and I just ignored. Now, in the past, when I've sort of suggested this to, you know, people who are doing mentoring or what have you, especially those of you who are new to photography, they're like, what am I supposed to look for? You know, what's the secret here? And unfortunately, it's actually quite simple, right? In my own case, I look for things like light and shadow. I look for reflections. You might, you know, want to keep it fairly simple and look for, you know, patterns, shape, form, those kind of ideas until it becomes a habit. And once it becomes a habit of being observant about the world, you will start to naturally gravitate towards the things that you're interested in. If you're a street photographer, you might, you know, find that you're actually gravitating towards expressions on people's faces. And the beauty of all of this kind of stuff is that you don't need to have a camera to do this. You're doing it right now. Even without thinking about it, you've started to look around you to think, you know, how would this look as a photo? Can you feel the burn in that muscle? It's, it's building up even as we are, you know, having a chat. So what's the difference between observation and awareness? We'll get into that in a second, but just a very quick word about today's fantastic sponsor, PickDrop. Now, I've been working with PickDrop for a number of months now. They've been very generous sponsors of the channel. And one thing that has impressed me, aside from the simplicity and ease of use of their online gallery proofing service, 
is the fact that it is built by photographers for photographers. And they take the concerns of photographers very seriously. Recently, somebody here on the channel posted a comment about their worry that the images on PicDrop were going to be used to be scraped by AI training tools. This was PicDrop's response. Hi, Toby from PicDrop here. Great question. Of course, we do not sell or give our customers images away. We also block search engines and all bots from crawling our customers' galleries. You can only access them if you know the randomly generated link. You can also add individual passwords to these galleries for an added layer of protection. This is, I think, what separates PicDrop from all of the other photo sharing services. They are understanding the concerns of photographers in this modern era that we find ourselves in. Go and give PicDrop a try. There's a free trial link in the description box below. So as I mentioned, observation is, is breaking down that filter, being able to see the things around us that we might have discounted in the past. It's basic stuff, you know, the, the shape and the form and the reflections and the light and the shadow. Awareness, however, is taking things a little bit further. It's the ability that Todd Heido had of going, that rain that's annoying me on the windscreen, can I use it? Do you see that, that leap there? Would you have thought of, of using the rain on the windscreen as a, as a sort of cool filter? Now, I've been a photographer for 30 odd years and, you know, over time, even though I've had little lapses of observational awareness, it, it's there's a bit more of a natural habit for me. But if you're just new to this and you want to build on the observational skill that you have and, you know, and start to become more aware, how do we how do you make that leap? Okay, well, there's really, again, there's a nice, simple way of doing this. And, and for this, we're going to use the help of Edward West and Imogen Cunningham, Minor White, and a whole heap of other photographers from the early 20th century. Now, they were more interested in about exploring the possibilities in everyday objects. They didn't want to have to rely on, say, the inherent grandeur of a scene to take a, a photograph that was amazing. So, you know, somebody like Ansel Adams, you know, he's taking all these wonderful, you know, amazingly, you know, expressive landscapes. But they wanted to come back. They wanted to find the interesting things in the ordinary. So I'm going to issue you a challenge here right now. I would like you to photograph a common object. It could be a mug, it could be a fork. But don't just take a matter of fact, image of this. Explore the potential within that fork. Look at this. Wow, it's beautiful. That fork, the light and stuff. It's so much more than just a fork. And then when you have a photograph, upload it to the pick drop gallery that I've created just for this. There's a link in the, in the show notes. And, and while you're there, have a look at other people's photographs. Get some inspiration about how you can interpret the ordinary in a completely different way. That's building up that skill of awareness. You build the ability of observation by just looking, and you build awareness by actually photographing and looking at images. There's a photographer who brilliantly puts these two facets together, observation and awareness. His name is Bruce Sale. And just recently he uploaded some photographs to a previous challenge that I, you know, I put up and, and I was blown away by the photos. I was like, oh, these are really, really, really great. And I wrote to him and I said, Bruce, A, can I showcase your work on the channel? Cause I, I really like it. But also would you mind sharing your process? Not the technical process, but the artistic process. And before I share that with you, I want you to to, to tell me, what is it that you think Bruce is doing with his photographs? What skills, observation and awareness, is he applying when he takes these, these photographs? That was very fascinating to hear what Bruce had to say, that he was, first of all, driving around during the day, past the things that most of us don't give a second thought to, you know, gas stations, uh, McDonald's, Things of, you know, everyday sort of nature. And, and he thinks, does that look interesting? Is it something that appeals to him from an aesthetic point of view? And if it does, he goes, great. So that's the observational part of the process. He's just looking around. He's trying to look beyond that filter that we all put up. 
Then the awareness kicks in. He's found his scene. But is there something around that's going to light up at night? Is there a street light? Is there a neon sign? Is there, you know, gas station illumination? <laughs> that's the awareness at play. He knows what he wants to create. Is there something that later on at night when it switches on, he's going to find? See how it makes the process so much more efficient. He's not just aimlessly driving around at night in the hope that he comes across something. It's planning. He's building what is, a, a, again, an exceptionally important skill in photography, and that is a prepared mind. If, if you go to the gym, you do, you're doing the reps with your arms. If you just go in cold, and you, you know, you're going to pull a muscle. So you need to warm up. And a lot of photographers have a limited amount of time to take photographs. So they have to go out and actually do some warming up. You may recognize this field. You go out photographing and you have to switch from sort of like work mode in your head to photographer mode. And it takes a little while. If you are constantly exercising this power of observation, this, this skill of awareness, thinking, how can I take a photograph of that thing that I see, that your photographic eye is always warm. It's always ready to go. You don't have to waste time getting into the groove and stuff. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing. It makes the whole process of photography far more rewarding and a lot less frustrating. If you'd like to know the sort of things you can be looking for to help boost your power of observation, then check out this video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.